Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to implement economies into your bucket plugin. So, this will be a two part video. I'll have the timestamps on the screen right now. Um, the first part will be implementing Vault's economy, and the second part will be actually creating your own economy. So, I'll show Vault and then I'll show your own. So the first thing I'm just going to do is create an economies class. Um, you could just do it in your main class or whatever. Um, you need to add vault as a dependency to your plugin. So right click on your project, build path and add external archives. That will be different obviously uh, depending on the IDE you use. And then I have just a dependencies folder with vault in it so I'll chuck that in. So. The first thing you're going to want to do is public economy, and this is vault economy. Um, and then what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to make vault money, and I'm going to make the custom currency tokens. So I'm going to call it money equals null. So I've just created a way so I can get the... Um, main instance and I'm also going to put something in here so this will be fired upon startup um, and I'll just quickly public economies eco eco equals new economies this so we're going to do your economy which is your vault economy and then you're going to do equals your main class dot get server dot get service manager dot get registration and then economy dot class dot get provider um, and something you might want to do is just check if you have the vault plugin. Do that because I know the vault's going to be there, but um, for any public plugin, um, you're going to want to add a check to see if vault is there. However, that's not particularly what I'm covering in this video. So, the usage for it is pretty simple. Uh, you can just see here, there's uh, withdraw player, there's deposit player, there's balance. So, just for demonstration, what I'm going to do is make it so that every time you log in, you get some money, right? Just quickly, I'm instead going to make it a chat event. So every time you talk, you'll get some money. So what we're going to do... I get my economies class by um, using my main.eco. Uh, so main.eco is now my economies class, and I'm going to get money and add uh, dot deposit player, right? And then you do P and then the amount. I'm just going to give them 1050. And then I'm also going to send a message. Um, so p dot send message you have and then uh, yt dot eco dot money dot get balance p so this is depositing one fifty and then telling them how much money they have. Um, so this is just to show that it works more than anything else. Um, you can take money and you can set their money and everything. As I showed before, you just it all comes from this money um, variable. So that's pretty much how to add um, Vault. And then obviously you can uh, interpret it as you will. So you can deposit, uh, you can check if they have money just by doing um, dot has and then their name and then 500 so that'll check if they have 500 um, obviously it'd be in an if statement 
but that's how to implement Vault. Now we will show you how to create your own economy. So this will be a bit more long-winded, um, and I'm not showing how to hook it into Vault. I'm literally just showing you um, how to have your own economy within your plugin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is decide whether you have a user class or whether you want to use hash maps. Um, so for the example, I'm going to use a hash map just because it's a bit easier to understand, I, f I would say. Um, rather than trying to figure out user classes. However, a user class would probably be a much better idea. Um, just for ease, I'm also going to load everything upon startup and save everything on disable. Um, however, the smartest thing to do would be to load players' data as they join and to save it as they leave. So, so private hash map uh, UUID double. So this has a UUID in it double as a key. The best way I always describe this is kind of as a config file. So I'm halfway through editing the video and I wanted to just give a quick um, overview as to what I meant when I said that it's kind of like a, a config file, right? So say you had, you were storing the data of three players. These are their UUIDs and these are their tokens, right? It's kind of the same in the sense of um, you have a hash map of UUIDs as the key and doubles as the value. And you have a key and a value just like in a config file. So it's pretty much just the config section like this with, uh, you know, all of the results extending down. And by the way, this is meant to say, uh, you know, one, two, three. Um, so this is where we will store the balances. Uh, so I'm going to call it tokens equals new hash map. And I didn't want that comma. So we now have that to store everything. And now I'm going to create two methods. Public void load and public void save. So uh, this is where the files class from one of the previous um, episodes will come into use. So in the load, the first thing we're going to do is if files.data.get configuration section tokens doesn't equal null. So this is just checking if the configuration section tokens actually has any values. Um, and if it does, then we're going to do for string UUID string in files.data.get configuration section tokens.get keys false. So that will loop through everything. Um, and then we're just going to do tokens.put uid.fromString uid string. So the, this is their, their uuid as a string, um, assigning their tokens. And then we're going to do files.data.getConfiguration files section. No. Uh, so files.data.getDouble tokens dot and then plus uid string so that will load all the tokens and then in save we're going to do if tokens dot size greater than zero so if this hash map has any entries we are going to do for uid u in tokens dot key set and we're going to do files dot data dot set tokens dot plus u dot two string now i don't need i don't know if you need to put two string or not but i always do it just to be just to be sure and then we're going to do tokens dot get u and then we want to make sure that we save the file so we want to try catch exception x x dot print stack trace and files dot data dot save files dot data file so uh, now in this part, we want to call the load method, and in the on disable, we want to call the uh, save method. So we load it upon startup now, and we save it on disable as well. Now we want a few more methods. So um, public void, no public boolean has player p double tokens so i'm just going to copy these parameters because all of the uh, methods are going to have the same so 
let's then public void add public void take and public void set so there's some methods that you can gonna want so for has we're just gonna do return um, this dot token so we can get the hash map rather than this local variable and then dot get p dot get unique id is greater than or equal to tokens so basically we're just returning whether their balance is greater than or equal to the amount of tokens add um we do this dot tokens dot put p dot get unique id and then this dot tokens dot get p dot get unique id plus tokens um and just quickly we're going to make another public double balance uh, tokens player p and then this will just return tokens.get p.get unique id so that's just to get the amount of tokens they have that's to check if they have an amount add adds their tokens since they are so similar i'm just going to copy and paste it over and then set is this.tokens.put p.get unique id tokens so we use player chat um, as the example for money so i'm now going to do a block break event to get tokens i already have a block break event actually so this is easily implementable and what we're just going to do is every time they break a block give them a give them a token So what we're going to do is get the economy class, add p1. So we're giving them one token each time they break up, uh, each time. So we're just giving them a token each time they break a block. And um, we will also give them a message. You received a token and now have... And then we're going to get the economy class again and dot and tokens p so breaking a block will give them a token and chatting will give them a dollar fifty so i will see you on minecraft to test this after i quickly get rid of that error okay so first things first we should get money when we talk uh I'm going to set my money to zero just to make it easier. So you can see there, we get a dollar fifty each time we talk. Uh, now let's just see if we get money from breaking blocks. Uh, if we get tokens from breaking blocks, I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, it doesn't seem to like that. Okay. I forgot an important part, and I just remembered. Um, you want a player join event. So we're just going to do um, in the onload if tokens dot contain. Uh, oh, I forgot the bracket if. If tokens doesn't contain the key p dot get unique id tokens dot put p dot get unique id zero and I put got name so that yeah, that was my bad I forgot the join event but this should work now so. Let's give this another export and we'll have a look, shall we? Okay, so upon breaking blocks now, you can see we get tokens. And just to show that everything saves, we will just open the data file and take a look. So you can see here, tokens, my name, 10. Um, and obviously, I don't store the money that's stored elsewhere, I believe for your essentials for my case. So that's everything I'm going to cover today. Um, it's probably not perfect. Um, and I also haven't shown how to create your own command for it. 
However, I feel like that's a different video because that's a command, not particularly this exactly. Um, so if you can figure out how to create your own commands using these methods, it's not very hard at all. Um, then you have a working economy. However, without the commands, I guess it's not the most useful. However, you have now got your vault economy as well as your own economy.